Good evening. Welcome to the Tasmanian Premier League Football Show. My co-host tonight is Ken Morton, the coach of South Hobart, and our guest tonight is Steve Pettit from Metro. Both these gentlemen have just returned from northern climes, and I think they brought the weather with them. <laughs> How are you, Ken? I'm well, thank you, Walter. And welcome to the show, Steve. Thanks, Walter. Thanks. Nice to be here. Now, we're going to the first game tonight between Tilford Zebras, who are second on the ladder, and Metro, who are second last. And, Steve, you opened the scoring in this game. Yeah. Uh, nice ball put through by, by Dozzy up front with me and uh, just beat the keeper at his near post. So it was a good start for us. Um, How did the team feel going into this game? Were they confident, Steve? Well... Yeah, well, I was trying to get them up for the game, you know, and, and I think we were confident getting into it. And I thought, I think we can, we, we all went out with the, the hopes that we could maybe stop one of the top two winning the league, if you know what I mean. Yes. So, I mean, obviously we're relegated now, so um, the only thing really to play for, we play the last two, well, the last two games over the, the top two in the league. So, all that's really left for us now is to try and stop someone winning it. Right. So that was our kind of aim on Friday night. Ken, you were an interested observer there because you were hoping that the Zebras would lose, of course. Yeah, well, the way the game started, I thought it might happen. Um, but let's be fair, Zebras are a class outfit. They always seem to have enough up the sleeve to win the game. I think the further the game went and the game got stretched, Zebras were going to win it. But I think Steve's right. Very early on in the game, they had a uh, Metro had three or four really clear cut chances. Um, Mayanella did well with a little little save one, on one of them, but uh, generally speaking, I think uh, Zebras were the better side. We just saw Jason Dawes there score Metro's second goal, which gave you a 2-1 lead at half time, Steve. How did the boys feel at the break? We've, well, I think we, we, we all felt we, we deserved to be leading, or at least still in the game at half time, you know. Um, I mean, we, all, we, we knew it was going to be a tough game and, and to be leading was, was good, it was a good confidence booster for us. So it was, yeah, we were, up, we were confident going out and starting the second half. Ken, uh, Henry Fagg, one of the Zebra's central defenders, scored the equaliser there. They seem to depend a lot on their defenders to push forward and score. Well, Benny Creswell has gone a little bit quiet at the moment and uh, I say that tongue in cheek because Ben can turn a game at any time. But in in the last couple of games, defenders like Taliga and Vag have come forward and got them important goals. I think the turning point, Walsh, in this game for me was when McKenna went off the Metro goalkeeper. He was playing well and organising the defence well. And they seemed to lose a bit of shape at the back when he, he went off. Yeah. Steve, what happens to a team when their number one goalkeeper goes off in a match? Well. Obviously, we've got the the confidence in him coming for balls, crosses, etc. You know, and and his communication with the defenders, uh, obviously keeping it tight. Um, when when when, it, when McKenna went off, you know, it was uh, obviously the, the the second string keeper was coming in to take his place. Now, I think he done well, but obviously he's not the number one. So maybe he, the confidence of the defenders slightly goes down a bit. You know, so. But um, no, I, th I thought I thought Simon done okay when he came in, but um, didn't have much of a chance with many of them. Oh, we did put up a fight at the start, two one up, so did our best, and then the second half they just pretty much yeah, we did was very exciting. We went into half time and thought we had a chance, and yeah, but just not sure, just lost concentration, I suppose. Once again, we've started slow. Um, but it just takes us a while to get going. I don't know what it is, whether it's a cold weather or what it is, but it, we're, we're a slow starting side the last two, two weekends, actually. But once we start going, we, we've got confidence. Yeah, um, Henry Fagg got one through there. Um, well, yeah, he's, he's one of our defenders, but he has scored a few goals last year and this year as well. So Tilford Zebras won that game 4-2. Our next game tonight is the one at the Athletic Centre between third-placed Hobart Olympic and seventh-placed Newtown Eagles. This was a game that Newtown Eagles really needed to win to try and avoid that play-off uh, for the relegation spot. OK, Ken, a surprising result for Eagles. Massive result for Eagles. Um, I think they are a side that have played with a good spirit when we played against them. 
but uh, I've never felt they were a side that were going to score six, seven goals in a game, and uh, they certainly went to town in this one. What do you think happened to Olympic, uh, Steve? Well, they've obviously, I think they've possibly went out thinking they're, they're playing one of the, the, the bottom sort of four teams and not really get started, and they've obviously been hit. Hit, hit big time <laughs> with seven goals going against them, you know. Eight yellow cards for Olympic players. Ken, what does that tell you about the team's discipline and the psychology of the players? Yeah, it's disappointing that when you get seven, eight players booked in the same game. Um, and for niggly little things as well, for arguing with referees, etc. And again, it's just for me, lack of discipline, lack of concentration. Instead of doing something about the game itself, the picking on the referee and mm -hmm. their opponents and things like that. Steve, that goal we just saw there, that's a, um, a delight for a striker, isn't it? Yeah. It says something about the opposing defence too, doesn't it? Well, yeah, obviously, if you're, if the, it makes it easier for the, the striker getting a goal like that. Um, and they're not going to miss them often. Well, you can miss them, but you're not going to miss them often. Um, yeah, just slack defending, and it was just very easy for the, the ball to come in to the, to the striker. Ken, what do you think of the Athletic Centre? I mean, that's Olympic's home ground, and to lose at home 7-1 makes it even worse, doesn't it? It's not been a happy ground for them, uh, Walter, this year. They seem to have lost games or lost points at the Athletic Centre for whatever reason. I know we're talking some of the, to the, some of their people. They're much happy to play their home games at KG5, and I think that's obviously in the makeup as well that they aren't happy at uh, the Athletic Centre. We had three players scoring two goals each in this game. Uh, Jamie Vernon got a couple. There we can see one of his. Well taken, Ken. Yeah, a lot of space in the box to control it and lay it off and nobody closing them down at all. So I think people have gone walkabouts in the game and they're not doing the jobs defensively, uh, just looking at that footage. And we see a goal from a corner coming up shortly. That was a rather easy one there, Steve. Yeah, uh, they seem to go in very easy. Um, I think with, with the cross and I don't even, I don't think anyone got a really great touch on it. Uh, it found its way into the back of the net. So there's a book in Walter just for a tug on his shirt on the halfway line. There's no danger there, so why do it? Completely unnecessary. Unnecessary. I yeah. think by this point they've probably gave up a bit of hope and just started getting booked for silly things. You can see the reaction of the player yeah. there. And there we see Wade Savage's second goal, goal number seven for Eagles. Uh, they actually hit his shoulder and went in, but they all count, don't they, Ken? Doesn't matter how they go in. Yeah. And here we see uh, Farrell Shaw, the Olympic coach, being sent behind the fence. He wasn't happy about that. He told me that he was simply trying to calm his players down. That very poor free kick there by Michael Buellis. Yeah. Uh, amazing. I mean, that start where it was fantastic. You know, three, three, goal, three nil up after so many minutes. It was a terrific start. Look, I think that, again, we've created lots and lots of chances for many games. Uh, and again, we've had two games now where the chances have gone to put away and it's given the lads so much confidence. And yeah, things are just turning coming right for us. Um, they wanted to all better than we did. They actually come out, they jumped us quickly. We thought we were quite comfortable the first 15 minutes. And then they actually come out and played our game better than we did. And the full compliments to them. I mean, they deserve the win today. I'd say ill discipline, yes. I would say some very quick refereeing probably led to more players being frustrated and, yeah. 